Next, we're going to hear my brother's most embarrassing moment on the radio ever. Huh? He hates this tape, but of course, I love it. Here you go, this? pal. Pop this in the old cassette machine and slink down in your seat while America listens to this. Oh, yeah, let me have it. That's not the cassette player, you moron. That's the heating <laughs> vent. Whoops, oh, that tape's gone. What else you got? <laughs> well, lucky for you, I do have something else. I have Max. Max! Max! <laughs> now, we don't know if Max's story is true or not, but frankly, we don't care. That's right. I mean, he told it so well, the telling loan gets him a spot on the best of car talk. And here he is. 1-800-332-9287. Hello, you're on car talk. This is Maximilian. Oh, of course. Maximilian. Max. Max. We'll call yeah. you Max for short. Where are you from, Max? Max, I'm from Valencia, California. Yes. And I'm listening to your program. I enjoy it so much. And I feel you two brothers are real mensch. Not, <laughs> not, on, not only this, you know, your, your audience are so funny. And I yeah. have a problem. And I thought uh, maybe I'll give you a call and you might solve the problem I have. What right. did you say about the stench? I didn't, I didn't get all that. <laughs> <laughs> and well, you're right. And if we can't solve it, our audience can solve it because they're the ones with the brains and we are the morons. Well, I've been in the car business all my life. That's why I like your talk show. And uh, last Friday the 13th, I had a problem and I can't get out of this problem. Yeah. You know, the car salesman, they're standing in the driveway waiting for customers. Uh huh. They work on the app system. Right. They work on commission. Of yeah. course. And I see one of my salesmen at 5 o'clock go to his bike across the street 10 times and come back to the showroom, change his mind. I say, George, what's the matter with you? He said, Max, it's 5 o'clock. I didn't eat all day. And every time I go to the bike to go to eat, my mind tells me I think a customer will come and I change my mind. <laughs> I say, Judge, I can't believe it. <laughs> you can't live this way. Why won't you call me out to take your turn and you won't lose anything? He said, Max, can I go now? I said, sure. <laughs> he jumps into his bike. He takes off like crazy. And an old woman just bought a brand new Camry driving by. Bang! He hits her phone pump. <laughs> my God. God, what unlucky day. I run down to the woman. I want to help my salesman. The woman comes out of the car. She looks at the front bumper. She says, my God, I just bought this car. I say, well, ma'am, you could have killed my salesman. She <laughs> said, I know, I know. I wasn't watching. Right. She was so honest. She said, the salesman didn't show me how to turn on the air condition was 100 degrees in Valencia. I'm trying to find this air condition. And <laughs> bang! Now, she thought she hit him. I know That's that he, good. he hit her. So I relaxed. I, saw, I relaxed. I said, oh, thanks, God. He said, ma'am, you're so honest. I'll take care of you. She said, you will? Yeah. I said, I have a big body shop. I'll put a new bumper. <laughs> so I take her to the body shop. The woman tells me, Max, can I go across the street? There's Target, there's Mervyn Shopping Center, while he'll fix my bumper. I said, great idea. And it's like the bicycle, ice. right? <laughs> no. So she goes across the street. Poor woman didn't know that the body shop closes at 6. Oh. 8.30, she comes with 20 bags. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking around, no car. The body shop is closed. There's nobody. I got it. I got it. She buys a new car from George. No, 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 Red, listen to this. This is a real story. I have a problem. Oh, there's a problem at the end of this story. They called me from down the street. He said, Max, there's an old nice woman screaming her Toyota, her dog. I said, what dog? I didn't know she had a dog in the car. <laughs> I take my keys. I run to the body shop. I open this huge metal door, you know, three doors at a time with the chains. Yeah. And what do I see? They pushed 35 cars behind her car. Everything went in. I go to the back seat of the car. I see a cage with oh. a little schnauzer. And <laughs> he's dead. No. He's with his legs up. I start sweating. My heart starts beating. I said, that's all I need now. I went crazy. 
I'm lucky I'm working 20 years in Valencia. I know everybody. Right away I go to the phone and I call a customer of mine that has a pet store. And I say, Joe, I have a big problem. <laughs> I say, Max, what's happened? I said, they just killed the schnauzer in my body. <laughs> he said, Max, how did they kill him? I said, it doesn't matter. Do you have a schnauzer? He said, Max, I don't. You know, I like you. If I had a schnauzer, I'll give you one. I said, Joe, you have to help me. He said, I'll help you. He goes to his computer, start locating, and said, Max, you're lucky. <laughs> the 20, miles, 20 miles from here in Acton, there's a German breeder named Hans shows 12 schnauzers. I said, really? <laughs> I take the car 300 miles an hour. I come to this breeder. I put the schnauzer on his table, and I say, Hans, Match him up. I need a miniature schnauzer like this one. <laughs> he looks at me. He said, Max, you're in the wrong place. I said, what do you mean? They told me you have 12. He said, Max, I do have 12, but those 12 that I have, they're champions. They're purebred I bring them from Germany. I have all the certificate. This miniature schnauzer will cost you from fifteen to two thousand dollars a piece. I said, <laughs> "What? Twelve <laughs> hundred to two thousand? I counted every pocket. I had three hundred seventy-five dollars. <laughs> I said, Hans, I don't need a, sh- I don't need a champion. I don't need a purebred." I want to replace this dead one. All I have is 375. Please help me. He said, Max, you don't want to breed them? I said, no, I want to replace this dead one. He said, wait a minute, I have something for you. He goes to his backyard. He comes with a miniature schnauzer. He said, Max, you're lucky. He's a year old. He's home trained. I love him. I don't have any certificate. I'll give it to you as is for 275. I said, great. Got no warranty? <laughs> no, no, as is. As is, right. I give him right away the 275. It was a salt and pepper gray yeah. schnauzer. <laughs> he takes the dead one, he puts him in a box. He takes the live one, he puts him in a cage. I give him the 275, <laughs> and I drive down to the dealership, and the woman is walking in the showroom, nervous. I come, I say, thanks, God. I couldn't believe what I found, the same dog. I say, honey, here's your keys. Here's your car outside. Let me help you with all the stuff you bought. She said, Max, don't help me. I had it today. She takes the stuff. She goes to the car. She looks from the front window. She looks in again. She turns right away to the other side of the car. She looks and says, inside the car, she threw all the stuff she has holding in her hand. She comes to the showroom screaming, Max, in German, she screamed, this is nicht mein Hund. That's not my dog. I say, what dog? I say, Max, don't play games with me. If you want to get me my dog right away, I'll call the police. You'll have a big problem. I say, Mom, I swear to God, I don't know. Is this your car? He say, Max, when I drove by here, I had a dead dog in the car. <laughs> I said, what dead dog? I can see it coming, you know. <laughs> what dead dog? She said, Max, where's my dog? I said, I have it. She said, where? I said, Hans. She said, how did you get to Hans? I said, well, I, I thought they killed him in my body shop. <laughs> so we went back to Hans. She saw him sitting in a box. She said, Max, you're lucky you have my dog. I thought I'm dying. I didn't know if to laugh. <laughs> or to cry. <laughs> she takes her dead dog and she wants to take off. I say, Mom, I really apologize. What happened? I say, Max, you're something else. Let me tell you. I never had any children. This dog is 17 years and three months old. And this morning I had to pick up my new Toyota. She went to the bedroom to take the dog. He was dead. So she went crazy. She calls her sister. And she tell him, I don't know what to do. Snoopy died, and I have to pick up a new car. He's all my life. So her sister says, if you come to Thousand Oaks, the pet hospital, in 48 hours, they'll freeze him, and they'll stuff him, and it looks like alive, and you'll have him forever in your bedroom. (laughs) That's some dormity, something like this. So... She she took the dog and she ran to pick up her car and that's what happened and she takes off with the dead dog 
and I'm sitting there with my live dog, <laughs> trying to give him back to the Hans, the breeder. <laughs> he had the sign, no refunds. <laughs> and he said, Max, I'm running a business. You own this dog. I said, I don't need this dog. <laughs> Didn't you see what happened? He said, Max, I don't care. Dead dog, no dead dog. I'm running a business. It's your dog. <laughs> I said, okay, can I leave it in consignment? He said, sure. Guess what? This Friday I get a note from him that he wants $75 a week to feed him. <laughs> now I have a payment. <laughs> <laughs> All because now you were I have trying. A payment. <laughs> <laughs> so what I need help from you, yeah. if your audience can find a real good home for this miniature uh, salt and pepper uh, schnauzer. schnauzer. I really appreciate it. He's a good dog. He's a year old, but no paperwork. No paperwork, but house trained. But he's house trained. He's house trained. Right. <laughs> okay. I mean, th this is a business we haven't started yet. I mean, we've been matching up people, but yeah. we've never matched up pets with people. Yeah. So we will do that. Absolutely. What I really wanted is to give it to the old woman that her dog passed away. Sure. Yeah. And, and I felt bad for her. Well, this one could play with the other one. It wouldn't be too exciting. <laughs> well, it's not a joke. It's a true story. No, I know it's a joke. You, know, you couldn't have made up a story like this. This I'm had to be true. You. I knew the story was true from the beginning because you couldn't have made it up. <laughs> I, I really want this dog to have a, a good home because, you know, the whole story is, is sad in a way. Sure. Well, you're a good guy, Max, and you tell a great story. Nobody can tell that story <laughs> like you told it. And we will find. What, do you have a name for this little schnauzer? No, I don't have a name. That's the first thing we have to do is come up with a name. I like this little schnauzer. I go to him every weekend. I have no problem giving him my name. Yeah, I was going to say Max his name should good. be Max. Max is yeah, good. His name should be Max. Okay, we'll don't do you it. Think so? Yeah, Max? I think so. so. Max is it. We're looking for a home for little Max. Okay, sir. Okay. <laughs> Good talking to you. Thanks for calling. Our pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. <laughs> you know, in the week following the time that this, this call aired on, on, on our show, we must have gotten 300 either phone calls, emails, snail mails, asking about Max because people either wanted Max or wanted to make sure that he had a wonderful that, home. And, and uh, that Max, the real Max, got off the hook for the 75 <laughs> bucks a, <laughs> right. a week. But the epilogue of the story here is, is that the, the woman whose dog died, whose Snoopy died, finally took the dog. She didn't want to because she was going through these pangs of remorse, but evidently after a few weeks... After I'll, a sufficient mourning period, yeah. she took little Max and, and now she's very, is a very that's happy. Sweet. <laughs> well, that's just about it for the second best of Car Talk Collection. And thanks so much for listening, and thanks especially for buying the album. And remember that all the proceeds go to the Save the Skeets Foundation. Or the Crash Test Dummies Widows and Orphans Fund. <laughs> thanks again for listening, and remember... Don't drive like my brother. Don't drive like my brother. Bye bye. Bye bye. It was barely red. What are you blind? <laughs> it was bright red. Anybody could see that. I'm telling you, it just turned red. No, it was bright red. <laughs>